but his biggest win was yet to come, despite the rain. He spent 19 days in a coma after his truck was hit by a train. He had the worst brain injury possible, a brain bleed, and the outlook was rather grim. He managed to survive his brush with death, despite the odds being slim. He had to start all over and relearn how to walk, talk, and function normally. It'll be my pleasure in a moment to greet this man warmly. This is the man that most certainly always made his opponent go splat. He ranks number one in nearly every stat. Even Dracula would shake and turn into a bat, as this man was already ready for combat. So put your hands together for one of the greatest, a humble, kind human being. Last name Hughes, first name Matt. Matt, welcome, my friend, to the Celebrity Tournament. That was a good introduction. You drop pressure than I do. <laughs> <laughs> man, Which I'm probably so happy isn't to have hard to do. But... And we have a lot of fun and deep conversations, but I got to say, 13 grand, trip for two to Greece, 111 luminaries. How about winning this whole thing? Are you here to win the entire tournament, my friend? I don't play unless I'm going to win. If I, if I, if someone wants to play against me, unless I'm going to win, I won't play the game. So, yes, I'm, I'm here to win. I love that. I love that, Matt. Absolutely. And guys, uh, Matt, I got to tell you, you know, the first topic, I wasn't known as being someone who could compromise. I, I, I'll own that. I wasn't. I was a stubborn guy. I wanted something. I went for it. So my question to you, my friend, as we uh, delve into the first topic over here is, can you discuss a particular time in your life in which you benefited greatly from being able to compromise on something that was rather important to you? What jumps in, in my mind quickly is... In my USC career, I fought Frank Trick the, the first time, and I beat him with, with a, a standing red naked choke. Ne never done before. And then four, five, six months later, Dan White calls me and says, Matt, I've got you next op opponent. Shoot, Dan, tell me who it is. He goes, Frank Trick. I said, Dan, come on. I can't beat that guy as good as I did, I did before. Let's find someone else. Oh, and, wow. I never said no to, no to Dana, so I think Dana said, let me see if there's anyone else. Dana called me back, he said, Matt, it's got to be Frank. There's there's wow. no one else to fight. So I said, sounds good. Without me saying yes to Dana, that Dana wouldn't have his favorite fight in the octagon. And on the second fight, Frank need me in the groin, and the rap didn't call it, but you know... Frank felt, felt the cup on, on his knee, but I thought the ref was going to stop it, so I turned away from Frank and kind of re retreated. Frank found a, an opening, and he pursued me, took me down, and was found it and was hitting me. Sure. And Frank then messed up a little bit. I picked him up, and w I, I walked him across the cage because I knew I was in front of his corner. So when I walked him across the cage, I wanted him in front of my corner, so I dumped him in front of my corner and beat him bad, bad. But one of the first times in, in the in the cage, I was mad because he put my cup. But I always tried to keep my brain, so I I didn't get mad at people. I I was a, a thinker, so I, I I actually told Dana, Dana, how can I I I be I beat him any better? So uh, that was my whether well, that fight Dana wouldn't have his his favorite fight. I'm very happy. I fought when I did because when I fought, guys got together to, to watch the sport. So now it's on every weekend. It's just not the same. When I fought, it was I fought maybe one every three three months. So it was more special back then. Was there ever a time you can recall in MMA, whether UFC or otherwise, where you felt that way about an opponent? Where you're like, hey, look, I'm not going to do this fight. Uh, I I never said no. I was happy to fight anyone. Uh, and Matt, I promise I won't call you sir anymore like I did behind right, the scenes. Thank you. No, no more sir talk. Uh, <laughs> topic number two is a, is a really fun one because the history geek in me always kind of brings up some wacky situations. And what you're going to do is you're going to be able to draft people from history. All the visitors from the outside of our galaxies have arrived and they have evil intent. They require you to coach a three-person basketball team to a half-court game of three-on-three. -three. First to 21 wins, the winner is the host of this planet. The only catch is that you have to go back in time and draft a team. You have to draft three historical figures to comprise your team. Which historical figures, which three do you draft in order to coach to victory and why? Well, the first one is Michael Jordan. He's going to be uh, on my team and probably be the whole coach. Number two, I'd have Scottie Pippen because those oh, okay. two know how to play together. My third is going to be Mike Tyson in his prime because he's going to get files too. 
kill people. Mike Tyson, Scary Pippen, and Michael Jordan. I used to love how uh, Chuck Daly, who coached the original Dream Team, they said, what did you do? What did you do to uh, uh, instill confidence in these players? He goes, you kidding me? I sat back and watched them do their thing. That's what I did. <laughs> my, my coach, Pat Meltich, he didn't know everything, but he brought people in and we, we made each other sure. who we were. My, Jeremy Horn, Jens Power, we all just got better from working with e each other. Sure. What, what do you feel is more rewarding for you? Is it hoisting a belt, a championship belt that you worked so hard for, or seeing that smile on those kids' faces when you're there for them? I don't, I don't mess with my belts at all. And when I carry it, when I have to take it somewhere, I'm, I make so someone else carry it. I send the smiles is by far that better. Uh, this is Matt Kelly. Matt, Matt Kelly. Hey, Matt. Good to see you. Good to see you. You've got what we call farm boy strength, and that's got to be respected, dude. I mean, there's dudes spend, you know, a lifetime in the gym, and they don't get the same thing from dragging 100-pound grain sacks full of beans and bucking bales like you and I both did. What exactly is that? What kind of strength is that? How would you explain it? It's, a, it's an all-body strength. Get to a point in the day, if you're out there from what we call can till can't, which is mean from the time you can see till you can't, <laughs> you know, doing this stuff, you get to a point in survival mode and you start using these weird techniques just to get through the day. There was times I come off the hay field going, man, I'm sore in spots. I didn't know I had spots. <laughs> I mean, exactly. And I never had to do lower back exercises because I, I was standing up with a hay bale. A bunch of guys at the Miltich camp that helped you getting your skills, perfecting your skills inside the cage. That was also very helpful. Very, very, very helpful. And without my team, I, I would not have defend the title so many times. Without my team, I would not have won that title. My question for you today is, if it was the last day of your life today, God forbid, who would you call and what would you tell them? I'd call my best friend as i say, tell this four or five people I love them. i tell her, her I, lo I love her. and She runs everything for me, so I would tell her I appreciate all the, all the work she puts into me for just being my friend, so there's no doubt I could call her and give her a list of people to call and she, she would take care of that list. She, there's no doubt in my mind, she would t take care of what I, I would want to get done. That helps me remind myself to pick myself up and stop complaining that my litter agent is being a jerk or that uh, I ran out of Raisin Bran or all these stupid problems that we shouldn't care about. What you went through, and I'm talking, of course, about that train incident. There had to have been a moment in time where you asked yourself, can I do this? And if I can do this, what's tomorrow going to bring? It, it was tough. When I got home after the train wreck, I was in a coma 90 days, and I don't know how many months I was in the hospital. Probably six months I was in the hospital. When I got home, my family thought that brain accident mad use was not worth, worth living with. So, so they kicked me out. I'm very blessed to have some good friends that sure. took care of me. And you did it with such gusto. You did it with such. It almost seems like you never believed that you would be down and out for the count. I'm never, I'm never down and out. But my family turning the back on me is what sinks sinks in in my heart. You just know you have to recover. You know you have to get up. You know how you have to give it to your best. Or do you talk to yourself sometimes? Do you remind yourself, hey? I'm human. I'm vulnerable, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take this this day by day and, and recover and make make myself proud. Is it an inner voice? When you had the worst brain injury possible, you you don't quite th think straight sometimes. So I've got people that keep me on, on the the right path. Without my best friend, the one I would call, right. I'd, I'd be in the ground because I was thinking about suicide and sure. without without her saying. Listen, mate, when you commit suicide, you don't take the problems out of the picture. You put them on your best friends and family. And she said she didn't want my practical problems, and I'm not going to give her my problems. So they took an option out of the table. And guys and gals who are watching, uh, Matt Hughes, some great career highlights. I hope Matt enjoys this. It's a couple of minutes. This is for you, my friend.
second round of this tournament. The day that the twins were born, well, my regular doctor was at an, uh, a Lion Eye football game. Uh, Matt was born first. And um, if you'd asked Matt, he said he left his brother behind. But if you ask Mark, he says he kicked his brother out. <laughs> the Hughes were blessed with twin boys. I think the best thing I can be is a good father and a husband, to be honest. Um, and anything uh, besides that is, is icing on the cake. I got to tell you, getting to know you tonight and, of course, the past few weeks has been a real joy for me, brother. <laughs> Thanks, Ellie. If you need anything done, though, just reach out to me. You got it, my friend. And welcome to round two of the Celebrity Tournament. Thank you, bud. Matt Hughes, guys, the great Matt Hughes. Since day number one, when we communicated, thanks to our uh, departed friend, Del Wilkes, who, who put us together years ago, you've not only been professional, you've been a friend, you've been honest, you've been courteous, you've been responsive. Uh, the Buff Bagwell, the Marcus Bagwell that I got to know, to me is more of a legend than Buff Bagwell. And we know that Buff Bagwell is a huge legend. There's no doubt about that. Right. But I want to ask you a question. You know, the universe deals us all hands from its deck sometimes yes. and our lives can unfold in how we play the cards in a different shuffle do you think if you were given the opportunity you would change anything man that is a fantastic question i mean a fantastic question and what what i look at is the word regret um i truly believe that everything happens for a reason i do not believe in the word coincidence i just sure. don't if i say the word coincidence i'm really meaning man god's right here went on, uh, i just wanted to come back on and obviously uh you know jump into to all the excitement about that but also to give you guys an update about our uh, theatrical release that's coming up for our long-awaited feature film project the unbreakable bunch also, um, you know, possibly being back in the tournament here, which is pretty exciting. Uh, you know, just tons and tons of Olympians, Hall of Famers, Oscar winners, Emmy winners, uh, legendary athletes. I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen such a diverse group of people assembled in one kind of competition like this, which is just very, very exciting. So uh, anyway, enjoy the show tonight. Hope you guys have a good time, and I will see you next Saturday, April 13th.